Okay. Um, yeah, I think we will get started then. Um, we want to try and keep to time as much as possible. Um, let a few last people in. So yeah, welcome everyone. Um, thank you for joining our workshop this evening. Um, for anyone who hasn't joined a workshop with us before, um, we are Uprise Academy and we exist to get the best of our generation, understanding what our purpose is and taking bold action towards it so we can create more remarkable lives and careers. Um, so today our workshop is all about how to turn an idea that you might have into a reality. Um, so we're joined by our head of product um, here at Uprise Academy, Stephen, um, who coaches our select cohorts of people through their program to turn their idea or even, you know, before they've even had an idea through to creating something tangible. So today you're kind of going to be getting a little bit of a taster of, um, yeah, what, what our cohort sort of go through. Um, so a few housekeeping things just before we get started. Um, if you have any questions, please do pop them in the chat or feel free to just unmute yourself and shout. Um, we'd love you to have your cameras on. Obviously, if you really don't want to have it on, that's, that's fine. It's up to you. Um, but it would be great to see all of your lovely faces. Um, make sure you've got a pen and paper or phone notes on your laptop, whatever, handy so that you can um, do some of the kind of interactive activities that we're going to set. Um, and finally, there will be a short breakout room as well later on. Um, so it's a great opportunity to kind of connect and collaborate as well with other people who are here for the same reason you are. And I think that is it. So without further ado, um, over to you, Stephen. Yes. Thanks, Katie. And uh, welcome, everyone, also from me. Um, yeah, so for this session, uh, super excited to have you all here. Um, yeah, and like Katie said, as always, it will be an interactive session. So please be, uh, be prepared and do the work and, and interact because that's definitely how you'll, uh, how you'll make the most of, um, of this session. So before we start off, uh, I'm just super curious to see where people are actually calling in from. Um, so if you could all just in the chat pop where you're calling from, um, your city or your country, because it's always great to see what international group we, uh, we have there. Madrid, Amsterdam. Belgium, Berlin, London. Great. That's really nice. We've got people from everywhere again. It's always good to see. Um, yes, so let's uh, let's jump straight in. I'm just going to share my screen. Let me see. There we go. Share. Presenter. View. Nice one. So hopefully you can all now see my screen. You can, right? Cool. Um, right. So we're going to start this workshop focusing on uh, decision making, because um, that's seen a lot that also comes up with people when they join us, like, what is my next step? Where am I going with this? And it might be that you can't decide on which idea you want to launch. It might be that you can't decide on your uh, potential career change, or maybe you actually do have an idea, but you can't really decide on what the actual next step is. So that's why we're going to focus uh, a little bit on decision making for now. Um, so when it comes to decision making, there is always a key problem, which is um, your gut feeling about the decision you're going to make. And your feelings make you doubt your decisions and they make you feel insecure whether you can or cannot do it, uh, or they heavily push you towards a certain direction. And the problem is with uh, making feeling based decisions is that they are often very hard to verbalize because it's literally a gut feeling. So you don't really know why you're making the decision you're making. So to move away from that a little bit, um, it might sometimes be helpful to go for a more data-driven approach. So just to get things going, we'll start off simple. So I would like you to think about um, a decision you need to make, ideally related to a career change you are thinking about or an idea you want to launch or anything related to what we're trying to do here at, uh, at Uprise Academy. And I'd like you to ask yourself the following question, which is very simple. What data do I need to convince myself of the right decision? And you can break this down as far as you can. And the reason for that is that by moving away from uh, feeling, uh, feeling driven statements, see if you can really translate your decision into numbers. So here's a little exercise for you. You can just simply do it for yourself. Think of a decision you have to make and answer the following question. What data do I need to convince myself of the right decision? So just to give you a little bit of an example, 
Um, if you can't decide on launching side hustle A or B, uh, the data you might want to gather is 70% uh, of the people I speak to who are not family or friends think this is a valid idea. Um, and then your next step would be setting up 10 meetings with people whose opinions you value and see if indeed seven out of 10 agree. Or another example might be, should I become an entrepreneur or not, since I also need financial stability. So in that case, the data you may want to gather would be, uh, what is the minimum income I need to survive on comfortably? Uh, how much savings am I willing to spend? How many months could I survive on these savings? Uh, can I survive long enough to make money from my idea? Or will I actually need to start it as a side hustle before I become a full-time entrepreneur? So in your process, try to give it some numbers and try to find ways to validate these numbers. I hope, um, I hope that makes sense. Um, let me see if there's anything else in the chat. No, that's good. So yeah, that might be something that can help you with the decision-making process. Um, I'm not saying feelings are bad. I'm just saying like sometimes it's useful to also have some actual uh, statistical relevance to the decision you're making. Another thing you can do when it comes to decision making on should I make this career change or should I launch an idea is to come at it from the perspective of uh, your future self. Now, your future self is simply the person you are going to be, let's say, five to ten years from now. Technically, this could be even more. And when you think about your future self, don't underestimate the changes you will go through over the coming years. And the proof of that is that you only have to look back five years and see how much you've changed over the last five years. And if you pro project the same type of learning and the same type of development over the next five years, you can only imagine where you could get to. So the central question you can ask yourself when it comes to making a decision is who do I want my future self to be? So with what decision would I make my future self the happiest or the most achieved or whatever you want your future self to be? And the benefit of that is that your future self is not that much affected by your current state. Um, and yet at the same time, you are fully doing it for yourself. So it really helps with your long-term thinking and your long-term commitment. So to become the person you want to be in the future, you need to start investing now at the level of your future self. So when you decide to take the, the future self approach, it really helps to write about yourself in what I would call identity statements. Um, and you might have also come across this in the book, uh, Atomic Habits by James Clear. Um, and identities, identity statements are basically statements that start with I, and they refer to the person you're going to be five to 10 years from now. So for example, uh, my future self, uh, I'm going to be the kind of person who helps tackle climate change, or I have financial stability. I have a part-time job and I run a small business on the side. So again, I've got a little exercise for you that you can do if you want to. And by the way, if anyone has any questions, just pop them in the chat. Um, so here's a little exercise. So who do I want my future self to be? And from there, you can write out your identity statements. And then from there, when you need to make a decision, you can simply use your identity statement to decide which decision aligns most with your future self. So from there, you get to a point where, um, as again, James Clear says it, and I think he says it brilliantly, he says, every action you take should be a vote for the type of person you want to be. So in this example, uh, what decision would lead to you being a person who indeed ha ha helps tackle climate change? Or what decision uh, would lead to a part-time job with financial stability? So for now, just go through the exercise. There also seem to be some questions. Assuming this recording will be shared after. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, what if they all align? Anis, could you... Uh, tell me about that a little bit more, what you mean by that. No? 
Okay, I'll just wait that one. I'm in. There are several projects I want to do. They're all in line, but I can't do them all. Okay, fair enough. Um, well, maybe in that case, you can go back to the first exercise, which is um, what data do you need to decide on which project you want to do, right? Because you there are probably multiple reasons why you want to decide project A and or B. Um, so what data do you need to make that decision? Um, and if they're all in line with the future person you want to do, great, then that bit's already done. Um, there's another question. Should the statements be in the present tense? Um, that's up to you. Personally, I would make it as real as possible. So um, as opposed to I am going to be, maybe you can write I am. I am the person. I am a person who. And then simply from there, you start to accumulate the evidence that you are indeed that person. So you almost reverse the process. So as opposed to going for a run every day and then over in a year saying I am a runner, you can start by saying I am a runner and then prove that to yourself by going for a short run every day. Um, cool. Okay, I hope you all had enough time for that. We're gonna move on. So let's assume you've managed to uh, get to make a decision, right? And you decide, okay, I'm going to start a personal brand. I'm going to write a book. Uh, I'm going to launch my idea, whatever it is for you. Um, so I'm going to run you through a process. Uh, which I think is incredibly helpful. And, you know, just a little disclaimer, you only have to apply this to decision-making or taking action. This can actually be a process that is, is used by many coaches and it can really be used for any problem you'll ever have in the future. And the best thing about it is that you don't even need to know why you have your problem in the first place. Because very often when we have a problem, um, we try to figure out why do we have this problem? What is it about? Whereas this process is completely solution focused. So you don't have to deep dive into why it is the way it is, but all you have to think about is how can I move forward? How can I take action? So let's assume that you've made your decision and I will run you through the process you can apply. So basically I'm gonna run you through this process and at the same time, you can basically do the exercise by following the questions that are written down. So first step is define and envision. So describe in uh, great detail um, what it is you actually want related to your idea or what it is. So you have your obstacle. So think about what your obstacle is. Maybe it might be what, uh, what business should I launch? Or it might be how do I come up with the best possible marketing strategy? Or you might have multiple problems. Pick one for now. And then, um, Describe what would overcoming this obstacle look like in an ideal world. And another way of thinking about this is if you could imagine like someone with a want or a magical question. Um, if by a miracle, everything would be exactly the way I want it related to your obstacle, what would that look like? So like I said, make it specific about one thing around the obstacle you have. So don't go down a route of, I want to have a huge personal brand, a family, and I don't know, live on a private island. That's too many things. So instead, you might be saying something like, um, I want to make a career change. I want to start a personal brand. But what I don't have is a website. Um, so what I would want, my perfect picture would be a domain, uh, a web shop, and some good copy for on the website. So for now, just pick one obstacle. Um, you might have many, uh, but also remember that you can apply this process that we're gonna go through over and over again. Um, and even with this example of, I'm gonna build a website, what do I want, a domain, a web shop, and a good copy, um, you could even dive deeper and just focus on the copy or the web shop. I hope that's all clear. Um, I don't see any questions coming in. So moving on, step two. How will you notice if the objective is achieved? So in the example of the website, um, my website is live. Uh, the copy on the website has a super high click rate and the web shop that I've created is converting. So think about your obstacle, think about how you ideally want it and how you would notice if you're actually there. Good. 
if people need more time, just say in the chat, more time. It's hard for me to exactly know where you're at with your answers. So this second step is all about noticing. How will you know if the objective is achieved? Cool. I'm going to move on unless I get someone to tell me that I'm going too quick. But then we're going to go to the next step, step three. Where are you now? So this consists of two parts. So if you imagine a spectrum from one to 10, where 10 is exactly how you want it to be, just as you described. So you had your obstacle and you had your perfect solution or what it would look like. Imagine that as the 10 and imagine the complete opposite as a zero, right? Where would you rate yourself right now? So in the example of the website, I might be like, mm, well, I don't have a domain yet. I've got a good value proposition and I've, I've written some copy. So maybe I would put myself at a four right now. So that's part one. So where would you rate yourself on a scale from one to 10 where 10 is the perfect outcome? So I'll write down your number, please. And then from there, the question is, um, what tells you you are, let's say a, a four and not a three? So in other words, write out what you've already done. Um, maybe you can also give some examples of past achievements. Uh, maybe if it's an obstacle where you need some confidence for, write out how you dealt with this in the past. So whatever number you gave um, at part A of the question, why is it not one number lower or two numbers or three numbers lower for that matter? Cool. I'm just going to give you a minute to write that out. I hope that's all clear. Cool. So hopefully by now you have your obstacle, you've written down where you would like to go, you've written down how you'd notice that you actually achieved your goal. You've written down on a scale from one to 10 where you are, where 10 is the perfect situation. And you've written down why it's not lower than that. Nice, so Hike is saying two out of 10 and I'm involved in a couple of online training programs. Good, you see, there's always things we're already doing, which is really good. Thank you for sharing that. Um, Right, step four. So by now you know where you are, you know what you've already done, and you know where you're trying to get to. Now the question is very simple. What would one step closer to 10 look like? So what would, need, what would you need to do to turn your four into a five? And I need you to write out these specific steps. And remember that you're only aiming to go plus one. So you're not going to go try to go from a four to a seven in one go, because that will just end up with a massive to-do list. All you want to think about is what do I need to do to turn this four into a five or this six into a seven or this two into a three. Um, so write out these specific steps. And then in addition to that, again, it's about noticing. So how will you notice you've moved up? So again, in the example that I gave about building a website, um, so what I would notice, taking it from a four to a five, is I would have a domain and I would have the outline for my website, right? And maybe not all the copy yet, maybe not a web shop yet, but I would have those first parts. And then from there, I can basically apply the whole same process again and figure out what is the next step from there. So I see there's another question in the chat. There's another two out of 10. Good, yeah. And I mean, if it's a big decision and if you're thinking about a big career change, your number will be probably pretty low and that's fine. The point is not to figure out if we're not good. The point is where we want to get to. So 
by now you should have written out um, what does one step closer to 10 look like, the specific steps, so don't write down too many, and how you will notice you've actually achieved that next step. And then from there, we're gonna move on to the final step. Now, this is about accountability. So to make sure you actually, actually execute on the next steps, um, you're going to write down the following accountability sentence. So by, and then the date, I will have achieved, um, and that's the one steps outcome, you know, and what you'll notice. And then you're going to fill in, I'm going to do this by, and that's where all the actions follow. So this way you've written down exactly how you're going to do this and where you're gonna do it, when you're gonna do it, and you can make this as specific as possible. So maybe instead of just a date, you can also assign a time slot. Um, and I'm going to do this why, by, in there as well, you can assign time slots, right? So every morning from nine to 10, I'm gonna spend an hour writing copy for my website or building the web shop that I want to make or whatever it might be. Um, the more specific you can make your accountability sentence, the more helpful it will be. And by, I mean, you can even write it off, put your signature underneath to make it even more official. Um, you can send it to a couple of friends and say, if I've done this by then, I want you to, uh, I don't know, I have to take you for dinner or whatever ties you in even further so that you start to, again, operate at the level of your future self and the person you want to become. So I'm gonna give you another two minutes. Um, again, if there's any questions, just pop them in the chat. I'm happy to answer whilst people are writing. Cool. Okay, so we're gonna move on. Um, yes, we're gonna move on. We're gonna put people into breakout rooms. So we're gonna put you into breakout rooms or Katie's gonna do this. This is gonna be groups of two people. And um, what I want you to do is basically describe your answers to this process. So describe the obstacle, the perfect future, where you're now on a scale from one to 10, why it's not a minus one. So basically previous achievements or investments that you've already made. And I want you to share your accountability sentence. And then what I want you to do is to exchange how you can hold each other accountable. Now, assuming this is a real life example that you've used or something that you're actually trying to figure out, um, I want you to exchange ideas on how you can hold each other accountable. Um, now we're going to give you 20, uh, sorry, 12 minutes for this. So you have about six minutes per person. Um, my advice would be to minimize the small talk and just get straight into it because you got a lot to cover and you'll get to know each other through the goals that you have. Um, and also uh, when the conversation has come to a natural end, uh, just suggest a break and use this to grab a drink um before we move into the last part of this um of this workshop um okay i see there's some oh yeah so katie um uh, katie has posted the suggestions in the chat so in the chat you can see the um instructions um okay so we're gonna start the breakout rooms um if you have any questions um just uh keep them and you can ask them at the end when we're, once we're back. So Katie, yeah, if you could put everyone in a breakout room. Yeah. So you've got so, 12 uh, minutes, so time it yourself. Yeah, I put some uh, instructions in, in the chat. We'll um, broadcast a message as well when we're sort of six minutes through so that you know to swap over. Um, yeah, if you can't join a breakout room, that, that's absolutely fine. Um, if you have any trouble getting into a breakout room, do let me know. You should get a uh, an invite uh, now join um, if you can.
I should be back now. <laughs> okay. I hope there um, were some good conversations and that people managed to find ways to uh, to actually hold each other accountable and that it actually was um, was useful. Yeah, so just to summarize, um, this is the this is the full process. So if you think it would be useful for you, just uh, just take a picture because um, maybe you can use it in other scenarios as well. Um, yes, and I guess the biggest thing I would like to give to you is like this process, you can repeat over and over and over again with every, uh, every step you want to take. Just get clear on where you want to get to, where you are now, what you've done in the past and what can help you step step it one step up. And with everything, I would highly, highly recommend to always take the first step within the next 24 hours, um, within one day, because if you don't take action in the next 24 hours, what makes you think you will do it the day after? Um, so take action as soon as you can. Right. Now, funnily enough, I saw one of the last questions before we, um, we moved into the breakout rooms was someone said, uh, let me see if I can just find it. What if you're completely frozen and you uh, don't know how to take action? Let me see. Yeah. What to do if you're totally frozen and afraid of taking action? So that's actually exactly what we're going to dive in now. Um, so we're going to look a little bit at self-limiting beliefs that might accompany any change. Um, and yeah, over the past couple of workshops with us, for people who've joined us more often, um, we've done multiple self-limiting belief workshops and exercises. So I decided to approach it a little bit in a different way this time. And yeah, so with everything we just did, you might be thinking something like, yeah, Stephen, that's, um, that's all nice and well, but I'm super scared. I don't know how to do this. And I think I'm not good enough. And, you know, the apocalypse might happen. And the thing is with that is, um, that might be the case initially that you don't execute perfectly and you're actually scared to take action because there's always a perceived fear or or sort of picture of what might go wrong if i try this and um this is where the future self comes in as well because by thinking about your future self and the person you're going to be five to ten years from now um, we've established as well that if you look back to the person you were five years ago and the progression you've made and the changes you've made and the developments you've made, that if you project that same development over the next five to 10 years, there's probably a lot more that you can achieve if you give yourself time. So um, the point is, you don't have to be good at it yet. Even if you're scared, nine of 10 times this is because we feel like it has to be perfect. There's this sense of perfectionism or I can't do this. And the sentence is, I can't do this yet, but I'm working at the level of my future self. And therefore you just bought yourself five to 10 years to actually learn how to do this because no one is born an expert, right? This is something that happens over time and you get better and better. And to help you with this, I create a little exercise. So really what I'd like you all to do is almost like put on your researcher's lab coat and, uh, and imagine you are running an experiment. So as opposed to thinking about this life-changing, all-encompassing, you know, life-defining moment, think about it as an experiment. That first step from four to five or five to six, or wherever you're at, it's just an experiment. And the good thing about um, experiments is that they're also allowed to go wrong. Because an, an, an experiment that you run where the outcome is not how you want it to be, is still a successful experiment. It's just not the outcome that you were hoping for. So, um, see there are some questions maybe in the chat. Let me just see. Um, imperfection is always better than perfect in action. Fred, I couldn't have said it better. <laughs> um, yeah, perfection is the enemy of good. And we also learn the most from when things don't go as planned. Exactly, I think you're all onto it. So um, I just wanna run you through this short exercise. And basically what this exercise is, um, is designed for, and it's very much based around a growth mindset. And for those of you that don't know growth mindset, growth mindset is very much about um, don't seeing, uh, not seeing yourself as a fixed person with a fixed amount of talents, um, but instead seeing yourself as a person who can learn, who can adapt, and who can get better at things, practice, and experimentation. So that's what this exercise is built around. So the first part of the exercise is um, writing down the assumptions that underlie your experiment. And when I talk about your experiment, it's about whatever it is you want to do that you're scared to do, right? And if you take action, 
if you take that action as an experiment, what are the assumptions underlying that? So I gave the example of building a website. So let's say my aim is to build a website and my first step is to write some copy for it. Now, the reason I've decided on this is because I've made some underlying assumptions, which might be, I enjoy writing copy for a website. Um, if I write good copy, people will click on the button next to it. And um, also, I am able to write copy for my website in two weeks, right? These are some assumptions that I've made about writing copy for my website. So the first thing I would do is to write down those three. I enjoy copywriting. If I write good copy, people will click on the button next to it. And I'm able to write copy for my website in two weeks. Then I'm going to run my experiment. Now, to get your thinking started, I actually want you to write down the ways your experiment might fail. So all these fears that you have, um, maybe write them out and write them down. So in my example, if it's about copywriting for a website, um, the ways that this might feel for me might be, I absolutely hate writing copy. I didn't enjoy it at all. I thought I would like it, but I actually didn't like it at all. Um, another way my experiment might feel is, okay, I've put my copy on the website, but actually nobody clicked on the button that I was expecting them to click on. Or, um, I thought it was gonna take two weeks, but my God, copywriting takes a long time. It actually took me two months instead of two weeks. Um, okay, Roxana, we'll come to your question at the end. Um, yeah, so I hope that's clear. You write down your assumptions that underlie your experiments, and then you write down how you think your experiment might fail. And then we get to the Third step. So per fail, um, I want you to write down what you could learn from that. So um, for example, I said, I'm going to write copy and I enjoy it. Then I found out actually, I don't enjoy writing copy at all. So what I can learn from that is I should outsource my copywriting or maybe I should write about things I enjoy more. Um, when it comes to the assumption that I had that when people read my copy, they're gonna click on the action button and actually they don't, what I've learned from that is my copy doesn't have a clear call to action. Or um, when it comes to time management, right? I thought it would take two months, but actually it took me a month. Okay, the learning I can take from that um, is I need to assign more time to copywriting in my own time management. So for yourself, of, of the way you might fail, you, pr you think you might fail, write down what you could learn from the failure, even before it has happened. So I'm gonna give you a minute to try to answer that. So basically in a nutshell here, it's what can you learn from your perceived fear that hasn't even happened yet? By the way, if anything doesn't make sense or it's unclear, please put it in the chat because then I can, uh, I can answer it. Cool. Then we're going to go to the next step. Oh, wait, there's something in the chat. What if your assumptions are already negative? <laughs> well, that's an interesting one. Um, if your assumptions are negative, why are you doing it in the first place? Like the reason you are thinking about um, taking action on anything it's because there is a perceived value to it, right? It's aligned with your future self. It's aligned with the person you want to be. So in my case, my future self might be, I'm going to start a personal brand and I enjoy copywriting, so I'm gonna write the copy. If my assumption is already, I don't like writing copy, well then maybe I can answer it in the first time and actually experiment with another assumption, right? Um, if your assumptions about what you're about to do are already negative, then, <laughs> that's not what you should be focusing on in the first place. Um, yeah, confused about what the experiment is. So the experiment is any next step that you are afraid to take, right? This is about self limiting beliefs, which means that we're afraid to take action. So the experiment is the action that you want to take, but you're afraid you can't, because that's where the self limiting belief lives, right? It's, 
I want to do something. Cool, you got it. Nice one. Okay, we're gonna move on. So step four, pair everything that you've learned. I want you to write down what you would do differently next time. So in the example of the website, um, if I hate copywriting or I don't enjoy what I've been writing about, well, maybe I should leave a budget for outsourcing the copywriting. Um, when it comes to um, no one is clicking on the call to action button, I need to include a clear call to action button and test this before I publish my copy. Or again, when it comes to the time management element where I thought it would take two weeks, but actually took a month. Okay, so I need to assign specific time blocks in my week for copywriting, right? So you've imagined in a certain failure, you've figured out what you can learn from it. And from there, you're going to write down what you're going to do differently next time. And again, this is all still a thought experiment. But yet, there's already solutions you can come up with for the problems that you've perceived that never happened in the first place. So have a little think about what you would do differently from the potential um, reasons that you think you might fail. In other words, your self-limiting beliefs. So I'm going to give you a minute to try to answer this one. Cool. Okay, and then we're going to go to the last step. The last step is to simply review your assumptions. So I started off with my assumption was I enjoy copywriting. Actually, the assumption that I should change is I don't like copywriting. I should outsource it. Um, my original assumption was if I write good copy, people will click on the button next to it. And actually, what I learned from it is websites need a clear call to action. If my assumption is I'm able to write copy in two weeks for my website, actually copywriting takes a month instead of two weeks. And I guess what I'm trying to show is that with every self-limiting belief, there is a fear that something might go wrong. These are just imaginary thoughts. These, happened, ha these uh, haven't happened yet. These only live in your head, these beliefs that you have about what might go wrong. So the funny thing is you can already resolve the potential apocalyptic views um, by going through this process. If indeed it fails in the way it will, that I think is the end of the reason to do it in the first place, can I already learn from that? Can I already think about it in a different way? Can I already change my assumptions? And by wearing this sort of experimental hat, you can apply that also to when you're actually executing. So let's say this would have all actually happened and something would have gone wrong. Great, apply the growth mindset, look at it not as I'm a failure, but I ran an experiment and the outcome was negative. What can I change in my experiment to hopefully create a positive outcome? Um, I hope that is helpful. I'm gonna look in the chat. Um, let me see, are there any other questions? I think Roxanne has a question. How can you ask, uh, estimate the grade you are at on one to 10 without defining all the steps to the goal? As I understand that we are trying to keep the focus on the immediate next step only to avoid getting daunted by the bigger picture. Yes, Roxanne, the truth is it doesn't really matter where you're at. Um, you don't, uh, no one is gonna give you a test and say your grade was right or wrong. The point is that you have a future vision and you have a rough idea on where you're at and what the rest of this journey would potentially look like because we are completely operating in the unknown here. We don't know exactly what the next steps are going to be probably. We don't know how things will pan out. We don't know what will happen with our experiments. All that is in our control is that exact next step, how we approach that and how we can create a positive outcome from that. So it doesn't really matter if you call it a four or five or a three. The point is, what have I already done? Looking at past successes. Again, this might build your confidence to fight your self-limiting beliefs. 
and to decide on the next step because that's really the only important thing. Step three and four will be informed by step two and step one. So just think about the next simple step to make it as tangible as possible. That makes sense. That's very good news. Okay, we've got um, three minutes left. Um, I'm going to hand over to um, Katie because we've come to an end and we don't want to take more time. Um, that was it for me. I really hope that was, uh, that was helpful. And please um, feel free to reach out to us. Um, over to Katie. Um, yeah, amazing. Thanks, Stephen. Um, so I hope you all found that really useful, maybe made um, some more connections as well. Um, so yeah, I mean, if you're interested in kind of finding a bit more about kind of what we do, or if you want to get in contact with me or Stephen, if you've got any other questions, um, or just want to say hi, um, or want to know anything else, um, I'm going to pop our LinkedIn um, links, LinkedIn links, um, in the chat now. Um, so feel free to add us on there, send us a message, um, and we will get back to you. Um, otherwise, you can also go to our website. Um, I'll also put the link in the chat there now. Uprise.academy, if you want to find out a bit more about what we do, our programs. There's also a load of other resources on there as well, like um, videos of previous workshops we've done in the past. Um, we've had a podcast, articles and stuff like that. So there's a ton of other resources there for you to go and have a look at. Um, but yeah, that is it for now. I hope you all have a lovely evening or rest of the day, wherever, whatever time zone you're in. And um, hopefully see you again soon. Yes. Thank you so much, guys. And Thanks, don't hesitate guys. to reach out. Bye-bye. Uh, bye, everyone.